The Trail Sport by Honda? Holy cow! What have they done to the pilot? Well, this version is more of a pirate because it's a rugged thing. It'll take you out and steal your heart away from you. This is a version of uh, the Honda Pilot that uh, I didn't foresee coming. And it's a lot more than the sum of its parts, let me tell you. It's a new off-road version. And off by off-road, I mean, uh, it's not a hardcore off-roader, but it is capable of going down a lot, of rugged, lot more rugged trails than the previous Pilot was. Or I should say the other versions of the Pilot. But like a lot of the other manufacturers, uh, you know, you got Subaru with your wilderness versions and things like that. This is a Honda answer to that particular need for people that want something that's just a little bit off trail uh, capable than the standard version. So is it? Let's dig in and find out. the Honda Pilot, or in this case, the Pirate, ARG. This, uh, this vehicle has such an interesting history, the Honda Pilot, because it uh, started out as kind of a, I would almost describe it as a lightly modified version of the Honda Odyssey minivan. And not actually, naturally, it wasn't a minivan. This is not a minivan. The Pilot's never been a minivan, but it had a lot of the same kind of attributes because it was built directly off of the uh, Honda Odyssey chassis. But over time, it's become its own thing. And this is the most uh, SUV-ish version of that particular family of vehicles that uh, I think Honda's ever made. It is a genuine three-row uh, hauler as far as your big family wagon is concerned. But it has so much more capability than the Odyssey does in terms of actual driving off the beaten path. This particular version, the Trail Sport version, uh, has all kinds of attributes to it that make it fantastic. It has, uh, among other things, it has its own special four-wheel drive system that is far more balanced and, and capable in terms of taking on the off-road trail situations than the old uh, four-wheel drive system is that you get on most of the pilots. And the pilot, of course, naturally comes uh, standard with front wheel drive and then there's an all-wheel drive version but the trail sport is all-wheel drive all the way and like i said it has its own proprietary system and it has meatier beefier tires and it has a full-time a full-time a full yeah it is a full-time spare but it's also a full-size spare and uh, it's very very different from the odyssey which is an excellent minivan by the way now, some manufacturers are still making minivans. They haven't been totally taken over by the SUV pickup craze. But this version is really, really interesting in that it's a lot of thoughts gone into making it as versatile and camp-worthy, I should say, as possible. Uh, your wheelbase. Well, first of all, i gotta, I got to be honest with you. Boots is an idiot. You knew that. But this time I, I had a comprehensive series of notes ready to go to do this particular shoot and I left them at home. So I have to try to do this by memory now and I will correct everything at the bottom of the screen. <laughs> so whatever I say, look to the bottom of the screen and find out whether or not the, what the actual value is. Uh, I believe the wheelbase is right around 112 to 113 inches. So that's great because it's not, va it's not so vastly, massively long it makes it unwieldy on the trail. It's actually a very good compromise between providing plenty of three row comfort and room and being able to turn around on the trail and avoid high centering to a certain degree. So there you go. The name of the four wheel drive system is the uh, the torque, the trail torque, I think. <laughs> 
But it's a special proprietary system, like I said, that is designed to be much more fitting for loose terrain like rocks and sand and all that kind of stuff. And uh, the vehicle itself has an, this, basically the same powertrain, uh, with the exception of that all-wheel drive system, as the rest of the pilot family, which is a uh, 3.5 liter V6 that, if I remember right, makes about uh, 285 horsepower right in there. Well, we'll see. We'll look under the hood and <laughs> Like I said, I will provide that information along the bottom since I don't have my notes. You'd think I'd be able to remember all this stuff. I just wrote it down like, uh, I don't know, an hour ago. But but look at the line. If you look at the rear of it, this thing is so wide. It, there is a family kind of, not a resemblance, but kind of a, it's almost like a genetic component from the Odyssey in terms of, and this is the, something the pilot has always had that's really good for families is it's wide, meaning that the interior room reflects that. You have an awful lot of hip room and side to side room. You could cram a lot of people. This particular one has uh, the second row is captain's chairs, so that limits how many kids, creatures, dogs, and other things you can put in the center row. But it has a lot of room for whoever's in the car. And that is a direct result of the the Initial blueprint years ago being the uh, pile, uh, excuse me, Odyssey minivan. But look at how wide this thing is. And it's got better ground clearance, I believe. Maybe not that much more, but at the front end, the fascia, fascia and everything else is designed so that you can move, maneuver around and you can dig it in the dirt a little bit if you have to going up some hills and stuff like that. It's like, it's not a hardcore off-roader. I mean, this is no Raptor. This is no TRD Pro. But it is a very practical solution for people that do want to go off-road with it. It can also tow 5,000 pounds. I, that I do remember. It does have that capability. And uh, matter of fact, let's look and see while we're here. What is our capacity? Here are our stickers right here and let's see you can haul a total of 1173 pounds so not bad huh that's a lot of substantially large people or a few smaller people with lots of cargo and man does this have cargo room holy guacamole i think you get up to uh, with both the third and second row folded i think you get around 86 cubic feet something like that but we'll cover that in a moment first Let's look at this beautiful V6 engine that powers this thing because it's not turbocharged, it's normally aspirated, and yet it has plenty of scoot to it. So let's have a look. Wow, let us look at this 3.5 liter V6 that casts normal aspirations. Which means it's normally aspirated actually, it's not turbocharged. Unusual in this day and age, but good, good. If you like a trail vehicle because of its simplicity, which is a real good reason to like a particular trail vehicle, then let me tell you, this does it because it is no turbocharging, no overly crazy uh, valve architecture as far as the, it has variable valve timing, of course, because Honda's been doing that forever. <clears throat> but it's a pretty straightforward vehicle. But before I show you the engine proper, I want you to notice something. This is really interesting. Uh, the hood itself, I don't think it's aluminum. I, it could be. But the point is, the hood is heavy. This is, a, this is a very substantial hood. But look here, you got this space here and this vent that goes directly just into the engine compartment. And then over on this side, down here, this fits down in here. So air comes in through somewhere and goes somewhere else. <laughs> well, here's one of them right here. The air goes here and then it goes See, I don't understand any of this stuff because it's bizarre to me. Because once this is closed off, you'd want the air to come in, pardon my camera shadow, with the air cleaner, right? Is that the air cleaner there? Well, it looks like the air cleaner may actually be over here. I don't know. It's all, I don't know when, when the volcano is going to blow or what all this ventilation is. It's, it's the most bizarre thing I've seen in a long time about how all this is set up. But I do know this, based on my long experience with various Hondas, they know what they're doing. 
uh, and they don't do anything uh, whimsically. This is a very, very carefully considered bit of engineering. So, but you're going to have, when, when you get one, <laughs> when you get it home, <laughs> take a look at all this, because this is fascinating about all these uh, air intakes. Ultimately, the only thing it has to do, it doesn't have to feed a turbocharger, it just has to feed the direct injection fuel injection system, which is incidentally located in between the V, right in here. Here's four, uh, three cylinders here and three cylinders in the back, and then on both sides there you got your uh, exhaust manifold. So what is that for? Well, I'm not sure. And here's something else that's kind of interesting. Uh, you will note, whoops, there's a vent right there. Don't know what that's for. Maybe this is blowing air into that back there. It's, it's fun, it's like a puzzle. Uh, the battery, the battery is located down here below the air clamp. Can you see that down there? There it is. So they've done a lot of really interesting packaging here. Uh, I'm fascinated by all this. But what you wanna know is the numbers, right? Well. If Boots can remember, and Boots' memory is crap and always has been, uh, I believe it's 285 horsepower at 6,100 RPM. Very high uh, horsepower peak. But that's, and that's one of the areas where it loses out a little bit to the uh, turbocharged versions of the engines because they have that really nice burst of torque down in the low R RPM state. And it doesn't feel weak off the line at all. Um, but you can tell a difference. You can definitely tell a difference as the torque comes on a lot stronger at a higher RPM and the, the uh, horsepower itself. And basically I'm talking about horsepower now, but the torque I believe is 262 at like 5,000 RPM. If I remember this correctly, like I say, I'll put it at the bottom of the screen as always. If I, if I remember this correctly, I'm gonna be so, Impressed with myself, I may have to, uh, maybe I'll have dessert tonight. But it's a real smooth, it's, you know, Hondas have always built some of the best smaller engines. Uh, and logically moving on, the larger engines are easier to build than smaller engines because, let's face it, like a V4 Honda motorcycle engine, of which I got two sitting at home, uh, is a really complex and beautiful jewel of a of a machine and honda engines have always been fascinating and they've always been really good emission wise if you'll remember back in 1975 i believe it was everybody had to start going to catalytic converters to clean up the emissions except for honda which is kind of at the fledgling point of their automotive career in america but they had the CVCC, the stratified charge engine, which didn't need a catalytic converter because the combustion process was so uh, clean. Well, that's the same company, folks. They're still doing that kind of thing. They're still taking engineering to a whole new level. And this is one of the most interesting V6s I've seen in a while. <laughs> Just because of all the ventilation, I find that admirable, even though I don't understand how any of it works. Oh, I do know one thing, though. Uh, if you need to check the oil, uh, it's right here, right there, SA020. 020 is probably the most common of all the oils out there too. So again, trail worthy, camp worthy, got your full, time, full size spare, got oil you can get anywhere. If you need some oil, you can buy it. You can usually find 020 oil at any little podunk gas station anywhere. So. Again, there's so many little things about this particular vehicle that make it a very, very good, reliable off-road companion, especially if you want to go out and camp for a little while. All right, let's move on. Ah, the ruggedness of it all. You know, if you're, you're, if you're keeping up with the, uh, the general market for off-road type vehicles or vehicles that are capable of going off-road, there's a huge battle going on between all the manufacturers right now to get your off-road all-terrain tire dollar and everybody makes some pretty great tires i mean with the truck side the michelin's got their ltx's and you got your falcon wild peaks and you got your goodyear wranglers and you got your bf goodrich 0456 whatever they're called but they're extremely good off-road tires what we have here though is a continental which is i have never seen these tires before and they are beautiful and uh, look at what it says right here traction plug plus technology there it is right there it's proof of it uh the and uh the 
to me, the, the, the common size and the most popular size for all-terrain tires right now uh, coming out of the factory, and it's a real good size tire, is the 18-inch, which is, these are, of course, 18-inch wheels because of that, because this is a 265-60 R18. Uh, this is a real stout-looking tire. Everybody's doing this on the side. And this is not just, uh, by the way, cosmetic to make it look more rugged. They usually have a bit of reinforcement in there, so if you do go crawl over rocks, it's a lot less likely to puncture, puncture your sidewall there. That's what that's for. And as far as I know, if Continental is Continental, because they're a very good car, uh, very good tire company, uh, these are uh, probably unusually stout tires for the range of that they normally put on something like a Honda Pilot. Uh, what does it say there? It says Terrain Contact AT. So that's where our tires are, and they're beautiful. And if you look there, look at the size of this caliper right here. Holy cow. That's a lot of caliper. Uh, very good if you're, uh, you know, all completely loaded down with your 1,170 pounds worth of stuff. And maybe even you have your, uh, you, you also are festooned with your 5,000 pound trailer. You know, who, who knows? Uh, but look, it says trail sport right there in the wheel. So these are proprietary wheels for this vehicle. Again, they've done a lot of things here to, to go right after the, the market that is abs absolutely sure they're gonna take their vehicle off-road a bit and they need every bit of traction they can get. And the, uh, another benefit of this, of course, is if you live in an area that gets a lot of snow, you have a little bit extra clearance, you have tires that'll dig and grab and pull you out if necessary. And what else do we have here? Here is one of the most interesting aspects. If you go past the rear door there to the end of the vehicle, look at all that space back there. That's not only cargo space, that's also third row space. So again, as it has always done, the pilot is a champion of making sure you have plenty of room for all your loved ones. And if your loved ones happen to be like uh, you know, cases of bullion or something like that, well, you're protected, you have room, you're okay. Now here's our third row, which is currently deployed. But if you look below here, we have a fair amount of space. I wanna say, uh, I wanna say 11.5. <laughs> Again, check the bottom of your screen. Here's a little storage area right here. And the, uh, to the side here, what do we have here if we turn this, let's see. Unlock, unlock, this is already unlocked. Ugh. Ah, there's our tire changing kit, right there, right there. Because if you go down below here, which we will later on, you'll see a beautiful full-size spare tire, which you gotta have if you're gonna go off-road or else you're asking for trouble. Now, how easy it is, is it, let's do this here. How easy is it, pray tell, boots, to put these things down? Well, yank on that, voila, you see? Shall we do the, shall we do the other side as well? Yes, grab this thing here, yank on the pirate, boom. Now look at all this space, holy cow. A lot of room for your cargo here. This has got to be like 50 cubic feet or so, something like that. But we're not done. If you really want the space, we got another row up here, your second row, and you can fold these captain's chairs down. You have any more room, so this is just space. I am showing you space. It's vast. This is a very, very, very roomy vehicle. You know, that's one of the things, I think they're going to sell a lot of these. They're like. For example, the Volkswagen Atlas is also a very, very roomy vehicle. And I think the success of the Atlas and the success of the Pilot, it has a lot to do with the fact that people that really need the room, they go to the dealership and they drive one of these and then they start crawling around and go, holy cow, this thing's got a lot of room in it. And that's what they need more than anything else, so they purchase it. It's that, this is something Honda has understood for a very long time. And there we go. Power operated, of course. So, I'm telling you, the more you look, the more you like on this vehicle. And the more surprises there are because it really is very logically set up 
for if you're wanting to do things that you normally wouldn't do with a pilot, you normally the pilot you think, well, snow, it's perfect for snowy weather, but I'm not going to go take it up to uh, Mount Havasa and take the kids and pitch a tent or anything like that because I might get stuck or I'll, I'll grind to a halt because of a lack of ground clearance or something like that. This will get you a lot further down the trail before you get stuck. I mean, you won't get stuck. Not ever. Not with this. This thing also has a... Uh, does it have a rear differential lock? No. It, I don't think it does. It does have a rear lock for something because it says rear lock on the dash. I'm not sure what that's for yet, but I'll find out. But anyway, there you go. There's your outsides and your engine. What about this inside I keep bragging about? Well, stick with us. We're going to take a look right now. Well, okay then. Now, could you tell if you didn't know what vehicle we had for in this particular video, could you tell what type of vehicle this was in terms of manufacture by the instrument cluster? Hmm? Hmm? I bet you could. Bet you could. This is the uh, the pilot's uh, pilot center, uh, your cockpit uh, gauge reading system, and in typical Honda fashion, it's very very uh, elegant and easy to read, and also has quite a bit of information in it. Now, are there theme variations? Well, no. Not that I have located. Uh, there are not. Uh, let me do one thing here. Let me turn that dude and do that there and do that there and do this thing over here and uh, home. Uh, and we'll go to uh, general settings and we'll have a look at the uh, display and what does she say? No, nah, it's just, that's just th this display. So, uh, oops, nope, nope, nope. Uh, anyway, uh, this is pretty much your main display, and but you do have a great deal of control over here where you can alter. At what I'm doing right now is I'm in the uh, particular part of the menu that is delivering information. Sorry about that flare there. That flare is annoying. Oh, wait a minute. I know what I might be able to do about that. Hang on there. Hang on. I'm, I, I'm, I, I, I feel you, man. I feel you. Will this work? Can I do this? Not very well, no. Um, but it, uh, let's see, if I do this and I do this here, and I open it, and there, that's better, isn't it? Is it not? Oh, well. Ah, the hell with it. Uh, so, anyway, over in our lower right quadrant down in here, we can vary what we're actually looking at from an information standpoint. Where I have it set now, uh, we have two different tripodometers, and then we have our. Uh, well, that's it, actually, and uh, <laughs> I do like my trip odometers, that's true. But here is a range and fuel. That's where we were, and now you can go to speed and time, you can go to audio, you can go to your phone settings. All-wheel drive torque distribution, that's always a good one, and there it is. Right now, we're not moving, there is no torque distribution because there is nothing happening at the moment. Um, but that's kind of a neat display, I, I like that display. Uh, and then we uh, shall, shall go back and we can seat belts, yes. Maintenance, when do you need maintenance? It'll tell you your tire pressure monitor. Safety support, what systems you have on or off? I have quite a few of them off right now. I'll explain that in a minute. And then there's no content. That's one of my personal favorites. Uh, if you find yourself that you don't want content anymore, uh, which is your right. Uh, <laughs> and we have... Brightness of the instrument cluster and then the gauge display settings. Okay, well, let's go there. Let's go there. Gauge display settings. And what, what does this offer? Well, we can range of fuel speed and time. Whatever you want to set, uh, put over here. Now, let's hit my navigation because this car doesn't have navigation. And I said, good, let's do that. Um, phone, driver attention, all wheel drive torque. Look at all the stuff I got in here. Uh, phone, I don't need that. Speed and time, range and fuel, that I like. Speed and time, I don't need. All right, so let's go. Uh, let's go back and see what happens. 
Oops, warnings. Ah, I don't want to go there. There we go. Uh, and go back again. And go back to uh, here. And... How do I just go back to... Uh, what happened? Uh, see, how, see how wonderfully... Uh, Oh, God. Now I don't know what I'm doing. It's all it's all a, a bluster. A blustery thing. Well, anyway, that, that's your main, what you can adjust on this thing. And good luck getting back once you started messing with it. Because it looks to me like I don't really know where I'm at. I'm trying to go back. There is no back button. Where would we be? We need our back buttons. No content, save to support tire pro. Ah, I bet I'll find it if I keep looking and looking and looking and looking. Well, I'll tell you what, no content. Um, I don't want to do that. I want to go back to, uh, I know what I want to go back to. Range and fuel, that's where we were. Okay, that's where we were. Weird. I don't know. I, 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 I found that to be uh, a bit cumbersome in its activities. But anyway, so there we go. That, that is our instrument cluster. Very, very clear. And, and the beauty of this thing, on the right, your speedometer, that is an actual analog mechanical speedometer. Huh? And on the left side, that is all completely virtual. It has all that information in it that we were trying to wade through. Uh, but anyway, that is all uh, that information I was wading through. There's our trip A right there. That is all done through the thumb wheel right here. And uh, eventually you'll learn how it works. Uh, what is a little more straightforward over here is our cruise control controls, because right now our cruise control is in the idle position. But uh, set and reset, very normal. Here's your distance of the following, that you're following the vehicle in front of you using the adaptive cruise control. And if you want the car to steer for you as well, right there, that's where that button is. The uh, Everything's pretty much straightforward and what you're used to as far as the, uh, the uh, windshield wiper display over here. Same thing with the lights. Over on our far side, we have a button to actuate our power operated rear lift gate. Here's your defroster, uh, your de-icer, I should say, for your front windshield. And then that's how you turn your cruise control off. Now. Our display is real interesting because it's much smaller than where people are going these days, but it's, I think, a very, very good uh, size. And uh, as you can tell, it's, uh, it's a very nice display. We don't have any navigation on this thing, which seems a bit crazy to me considering the sticker's uh, $48,000, but that's where we're going. Uh, you need to get it with nav, I believe. I don't know if you could... You know, you all, always have your Android Auto or your uh, uh, iPhone car. What the hell is it called? Car, car, cars of Plenty? Car Magic? <laughs> I never use It's called CarPlay. I never use it, uh, but you have that option because this is completely compatible with both those systems off of your intelligent phone. Um, but it's a very nice screen overall, and the touchscreen seems to be... Uh, fairly responsive. I, I've had a lot of them lately that there's some lag in them, and this one doesn't seem to be have that problem. It seems to be pretty straightforward. Uh, and uh, let me show you the uh, rear cameras, because rear cameras are very good. And there you have your 360 over here. And look at here, there's adjustments. You can make adjustments. Look at that wide angle. That's beautiful. Nice and wide, and then you got your more, your tighter, your tighter version, which is almost like a Let's see now, which is, uh, actually, that's not as wide as this one. This is like a fish eye. Fish eye over here. Oh, what does this do? Uh, I don't know what that does. Oh, it, it covers the entire screen, which you may want to do. And you use that one. Okay. But anyway, that's what you get with that. And, uh, boy, wait till you get down to our shifting quadrant there because it's, uh, it's different. Uh, it's where Honda's going these days, and uh, I don't know how I feel about it, but there it is. Okay, here we have our uh, climate control center. Very, very straightforward, very, very normal. Heated seats, not ventilated, but heated. Uh, and everything else is very simple. 
this uh, rear settings, you can set the rear air conditioning at a certain thing, and then you can lock it so that the people down back there with their controls can't mess with it, like your children. That, that like They want to go ice skating or something, and they want to take the temperature down well below zero. So you can lock them out of doing that, those, ki those rascal kids of yours. Now, further down, we have both the USB-A uh, and USB-C and your 12 volt power port for yourself there. And here we have our, uh, I've turned it off, I'll turn it back on. Leave that on, there we go. Uh, here is your QI charger and there it is, QI charging. Very nice, a nice little, I love these little cubbies like this because I never know what the hell they're for. And one day I'm going to be going somewhere and I'm going to have the perfect object to put inside there and I'll be uh, ecstatic. Uh, moving back here, believe it or not, this is our shifting. What do we call this? Our shifting center. But you got a button and, and uh, a, a different style of button to put it in reverse, which you, which you actually push back like that and it goes in reverse. Park is a button up here. Neutral is just there. And if you want to go to drive or in the sport version, which is your manual setting for your trans for your 10 speed transmission, there you go. Now I'm in drive. So different. Uh, I still haven't weighed in about how I ultimately feel about it. It's, I find it awkward to use, but you know, it's like everything else. If you own the vehicle, you get used to it and then you'll think it's the greatest thing since sliced bread. Here we have our drive mode selector. And what drive modes do we have? We have normal. We have Econ, which is what we are on, Snow and Trail. Look at that. I love the graphics. Don't you love the graphics? And uh, Sand and Towing. Uh, yep, if you're towing something, that's your towing mode. But if you're towing in the snow, uh, you know, you, you, you got you to gotta choose. Uh, well, let's go back to, uh, uh, let's go back to yeah, Eco. That's where we'll go. Uh, but anyway, that's what that's for. And here's your brake hold if you want to uh, have your brake hold on hills and that kind of thing. Descent control. This will help you go downhill in an off-road situation. And you can actually, uh, I believe, you can, you can alter the, it's set at two miles an hour, but you can actually set it at different speeds. Let's see what we can do if, if I can figure this out now. Because I would think you might be using the thumb wheel to do that. Okay, here we go. Oh, it's just telling you how fast you're going. It's not going to... Yeah, you don't have any control over that. It's just telling you that. All right, fair enough. Uh, if that's what you want to do. <laughs> Whatever. Okay, we're back to normal. Park brake engaged. Actually, it is, of course, nowadays, as is the de rigueur, an electronic park brake, and they work very, very well. Uh... A nice, generous uh, glove box, pretty good size. Then you have this uh, this area up here for putting items. It's got a little shelf on here, got a little berm so they don't go flying out, except if you hit the brakes really hard, in, it, in which case they'll go flying out. But uh, let's go here. Nice, deep center console. I mean, nice and fat and wonderful. There's plenty of room in there for uh, some of your belongings. And then what about these seats? These seats are great. They're custom trail sport seats, as you can see right there. And uh, what is our material? Well, the material is, in fact, goes by the name of, of, uh, well, the steering wheel, of course, is leather wrapped. Everybody does that now. Uh, what type of, I go into this every single time because I don't know. Uh, the interior color is, in fact, black. Got that. That's good. Okay, I got that one. But I don't see... Uh, I'm looking in the options to see maybe... I, is this like Napa leather? Is it... Uh, no, I don't see anything. Talks about that. That, that touch screen, by the way, is nine inches across, as you can see. Uh, you have a TFT meter display, which I'm not sure exactly what that means, TFT. I like the sound of it, though. Uh, you got cabin talk, which I think you can monitor up front what they're talking about in the back of the car if your kids are plotting some outrage. And 
that yes they are heated they are it doesn't say I can't see it anywhere on here oh it's built in Lincoln Alabama I don't even know where that is huh. uh, hi Lincoln how are you thank you for building this Honda Pilot tour sport or excuse me trail sport I wonder if they make it too oh, anyway uh, so I can't tell you any further about what these seats are made out of. I'm pretty sure it's leather. It seems to be leather, but you never know nowadays. This could be one of the Tex materials. But it's a nice, solid uh, upholstery that I think can take a lot of wear and tear and abuse. And they have good, generous side bolsters, so they're very comfortable seats overall. Uh, so anyway, since this is a pilot, it's time to migrate. To the second row. Now, as is the case, hello ponies, as is the case with just about everybody these days. Oh, nice big rear doors. I mean, seriously, seriously good. They open to almost 90 degrees. But that's very, very nice. Easy access. Um, everybody's going with the captain chairs in the second row, and it seems to me you're using, losing a lot of uh, utility when you do that, but. Anyway, these recline a bit. I'm reclined. Oh, I'm client. I'm, I'm client. Oh, oh, I'm a, yep. Right there. Okay, good. Uh, they also slide back and forth. And if you have them, uh, let's say uh, that's all the way forward, all the way back. We'll put it in the middle, right about there. And you have very good room. You have tons of headroom here. And here we have our bug encrusted uh, panorama roof, which increases the feeling of airiness. And uh, it seems, it's funny, it actually feels like just first blush, like the rear seats are on an exact same level as the front seats or maybe slightly lower. And it's not unusual to have them slightly higher. Uh, but there you go. Uh, we do have here, let's see how far our winder goes down. As I suspected, 100%, excellent. And we do have our our shades. Excellent, excellent. So the seat itself is very flat. It, the second rows just by by God's design apparently have to be flat. They, they they can't be very contoured even when they're captain's chairs. But that's, you know, that's the way you want to do it. That's why you want to do it. The load floor down here is completely flat. There is no drive shaft tunnel, which is fantastic. And you also uh with the uh trail sports you get these wonderful rubber mats all over the vehicle and they are excellent because that's exactly what you need especially in the northeast because in the springtime you got the muck and in the summertime you got uh, the, the manure <laughs> and in the fall you got all the leaves and crap that are also mixed with the muck and then in the winter you got the snow which melts and turns to water so you know I, anything's got carpet on it it really doesn't work up here in my opinion I don't care what the car is uh, rubber mats like these are excellent now look at here this is this is something you don't see very often you have a special pocket here that you can put your I guess your phone I guess that's what that's meant for that's interesting and then you have your regular open pocket for magazines or tablet computers. Here is the controls I mentioned earlier that the young ones can get a hold of. If they want, they can put it on automatic or they can put it on, uh, I had it on sync. Huh, I guess sync is, is you can override that if you're back here. Huh, I just overrode it, how about that? But you can also, like I say, use the, uh, the rear lock on there. I thought initially that might be for a locking rear differential, but it is not. Uh, it is for locking the rear climate control system. But incidentally, everything I mentioned here is also available here. So both of these seats have that wonderful pocket there, which is great. Uh, you got your map lights right up here. So everything here is wonderful. And do you have armrests? Of course. There's your armrest, and I'm resting my arm on it. Very good. Now, the thing about these uh, captain's chairs, I have to say that it is positive. If you do have a true three row that you're going to be using that third row a lot, it's great to have the captain's chair because look at how easy your access is. You just go through here. It's an aisle, and there you are. And now we are in the back. Now, this is something that I always feel like there. This is where it's most closely related to the Honda Odyssey minivan. 
is because you got very, very good room for two adults back here. You got tons of headroom, good leg room, good foot room. It's nice. It's, it's absolutely comfortable. And by the way, you also, in addition to the aisle access, you also have this right here. Look at that. Woo, slide and, and tilt forward so you can get out that way if you want to. I mean, that's just clever as all get out. Uh, and but but the the big thing is you got hip room you got good room back here for two adults uh, and three kids easy no problem you could absolutely put three kids back here I need to put this back up you know you got to learn how to do these things if you're going to have the third row uh, there we are uh, so what do you think huh nice this is a very good and there's your map light you even get map light so this is not a torturous uh, realm for your third row passengers. They're gonna have plenty of room in it. So that's the big thing about the pilot. Look at how, I don't know if you can tell this, but how big and square this cabin is. There is a lot of room in this vehicle. And I think it's one of its most outstanding characteristics. Although to be honest, it doesn't have any real weak spots anywhere. Uh, but I have to say of the, of the peak excellence of it, comes in the interior design because there is so much room here. This, you know, the, 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 if you want to duke out the room thing, get a, uh, take a look at the Volkswagen Atlas and take a look at this thing. And these two vehicles are about the same dimensionally, I believe, on the outside and on the inside. Lots and lots of room. Not that your other one, your Highlanders and everything else don't offer plenty of room. And we're going to have the uh, new Grand Highlander uh, in a couple of weeks. So I will be thinking about this vehicle when I'm looking at that one because uh, it, may, it may be on a similar level of room. But man, I tell you, if you need the family hauler, it's understandable why uh, these people are limping by without getting a minivan. But you still don't have as much room as you do with a minivan. And, and most importantly of all, you don't have the excellent sliding door access that minivans give you. But you do have very large, generous side doors in this vehicle. All right then, let's go onward then. I'm an old cow hand from the Rio Grande. I smell like poo in the day is through. True story. Hey, how do I get to how do I get to my navigator? Oh, I don't have navigate. I have a compass. I have no navigation on this vehicle. Forty-eight grand. No, no navigation. One of the few foibles of this vehicle, in my view. I don't know what's going on with navigation because everybody's trying to... Well, I was getting in an argument with Toyota about the fact that they, uh, I had this new uh, Lexus, you see. Pricey item. Great car. I really liked it a lot, actually. And, uh, but, however, I got to adjust my mirrors here. Hang on. Uh, oh, dear, I hit the wrong button. Now they've, I've destroyed the mirrors. Oh, okay. All right. There we go. There we go. Come on now. Over here. Hey, hang on a minute, guys. Lift. And there we are. All right, we're there. Uh, so anyway, uh, I really liked the car a lot, but it didn't have a navigation system because I had not subscribed to one. And the whole world seems to be taken over by this whole subscription business model. First of all, I've always hated the term business model. Uh, to me, a business model is, is like a, you build a little model right around your train set there that has like a met life on it or something like that. That's a business model. But all the rest of this, just we used to just have people that ran business. Like the, I, when I was growing up as a kid, I don't remember this expression, CEO, the chief executive officer, like it's some kind of a battleship. I mean, people are so full of themselves, aren't they? It used to be just the boss or the president of the company. You know, that, that's what it was. But now you have your chief, I'm the chief financial officer. I'm the chief 
technology officer. Shut up. Uh, I shouldn't say these things. I'm going to get in trouble. I'm going to probably be dealing with some of these people very soon on my vacation because where I'm going, I, I greatly fear there'll be a number of them running about. Anyway, I do like this engine because it does, it seems like all Honda engines, willing to rev. It, it really likes to spin up higher with great ease. And, and that's a good thing because the torque curve is higher than what you'd get with like a, uh, like a V6 that has twin turbocharged engine componentry. So, how does it do on the road? Well, our, uh, our what is it, what's it called? A trail jet? Trail master? Tra well, the, tra the traily version is right here is more set up, you would think, suspension-wise for, for trails, a little bit more rugged, a little stiffer, but the fact is it rides real nice on the road. Very, very capable. And the thing about that is I've, I've seen such, there's been periods where manufacturers are getting better and better in some areas, and I think they're getting worse and worse in others. But one area that's been really good is with conventional non-air assisted non-high technology variable instantaneously in nanoseconds by reading the road using the, the old conventional style of uh, suspension in terms of shock absorbers and coil springs or whatever has also gotten a whole lot better it's that analogy i always made if we didn't get rid of film in both uh, still cameras and motion picture cameras and the latter of which i used to deal with heavily uh, the emulsions and the stocks of film were getting better and better and better and better all the time. Sharper, clearer, uh, much wider tolerance to light and shadow. All the things that you need. And digital just took over for all that, so that pretty much stopped all the development in film that was going on. And I can't help but wonder what would have happened if we were still doing film quite a bit as well. But now film's almost completely gone in terms of motion picture, it'll come back. I mean, look at vinyl. Vinyl was, when it comes to audio files, was, was basically dead, but it's made a huge comeback. And now that's some people, that's all they'll listen to. And I admire that. I admire anybody who likes something that works really well, but is possibly a technology that some people is ob think consider is obsolete. So anyway, the suspension wise with just springs and shock absorbers, the shock absorbers themselves, the valving, the testing, the, the various mechanical tricks they've come up with over the years, suspensions are better than ever. Uh, no longer do you find, there's, you can't buy a full size car that I'm aware of, well they can't, you almost can't buy a full size car anymore, but the ones I've been experienced with uh, that have had a normal suspension without all the bells and whistles of air suspension and everything else, uh, they really ride well and they're no longer lumbering lam uh, lumbering beasts that they used to be in the old days because men have learned, mankind has moved forward. The men and women of suspension development have not been idle. So uh, this has all the things I'm just talking about. This has a conventional, it has a non-turbocharged engine and it has a conventional uh, suspension system with just coils and shock absorbers and it works very, very well. It, uh, it has a, a fair amount of mass to control here and yet it, it, it comes very close to feeling light on its feet. When you change direction suddenly, it's no problem. One of the things that helps that and is unfortunately a slight detriment on the trail is how wide this vehicle is and how wide the stance is because the wider the vehicle ten, you know, it goes back to the wheel at every corner architecture on minis and other small cars like that it's actually very very stable because it has a wheel at every corner and the pilot and the odyssey are, have always sort of been like that although this one seems to have uh, the wheelbase on it being such that it's a good compromise between uh, my stuff sliding around in the back and uh, what you want off-road as far as a easy fast turning radius 
and low or fairly high number in terms of your ramp breakover angles to uh, just general stability on the road. That's very admirable. And even, uh, but the, the bad side of having the wide stance as opposed to the shorter wheelbase is when you go on a narrow trail and there's trees and brush and everything else. I mean, that's, that's just what I'm familiar with with being, doing a fair amount of off-roading in my life. That's why I've never, and I used to drive quite a bit on the beach, and I've never understood the idea of taking the doors off your car. Because unless you need to jump in and out like a UPS man, uh, it makes no sense to me because it invites all the things that are on the beach into your vehicle. And that includes your sand fleas and your sand that hang out in with the sand fleas. And if you're off-road driving, all the brush and stuff like that that I mentioned up in the forest is now uh, big sticker bushes and stuff like that. That's now being invited into your vehicle because you took the doors off. But people think it's great. You know, people just love it. They love it so much that Ford did the, made that possible on the... Uh, new Bronco just aping the Jeep Wrangler that has been so popular although I kind of wonder about Wrangler sales these days because I see vast numbers of them on used car lots and I mean I'm talking less than five years old so I don't know what's going on with that but personally I'm just saying in my humble opinion you're better off having a good hard top vehicle than something you can take all the, all the stuff off and enjoy the breeze. If you want to enjoy the breeze, take it from me, get a motorcycle. That way you have all the breeze you're ever going to want. Anyway, so where does uh, our pilot come in? Well, our pilot's doors are ensconced onto the vehicle. They stay there. So if I was to drive this over to Rhode Island right now and drive down the beach somewhere, most of that sand, not all of it, but most of it is going to stay outside the vehicle. If I was to go up a trail I know here that's just real overgrown right now on the sides with sticker bushes, bushes, bushes. <laughs> that's the unusually stout sticker bush. And, and that sort of thing and tree limbs and all that kind of stuff, none of that stuff's going to come in and poke any of my occupants because they are protected by a door. If you are to have a collision, if you're selecting your collision, to have somebody T-bone you in the side, much better to have a door there than to not have a door there. Take my word for it. So, this is a, this is, I've always tended to wander towards the more, uh, going all the way back for you people that want to go down memory lane, go back and look at the 1972 International Harvester Scout II. It had a real short wheelbase, it was a two-door, but it had a, a, a surprising amount of room in it and was very off-road capable, but they never even entertained the notion of being able to take the, deer, uh, the doors off because it was primarily aimed, that vehicle was primarily aimed at, I think, one type of off-road driver, and that's hunters, and they just didn't see the advantage of having the, and I know you see all the safari movies where they got the, uh, Land Rovers and they got the doors taken off, but that's a different kind of driving in a different kind of situation that for some reason they think it's better not to have to mess with the door. But anyway, rant ended for the moment. So what else can I tell you about this? How quiet is it? It's, it's suffering from slightly from something that Hondas have suffered from forever is road noise. I don't know why Hondas, they've gotten a lot better than they used to be. But that's always been a genuine foible with Hondas is that there's a fair amount of road noise. And I, I don't really understand why that's always been a, a thing, but it is a thing. So you get the main cabin is very quiet. Wind noise, it's really quiet. They did a great job. The size of the mirrors, of course, depends on a lot of what you hear when you're sitting up front like this. And these mirrors are a very nice compromise between smaller and more aerodynamic and big enough so you can actually see. You know, unlike like G, certain GM uh, automobiles like Cadillacs that the mirrors are getting smaller. It's like looking through a, the little postal flap at someone's house. It's too, it's too thin. It's too scrunched. This is a real good size and a real good design of mirror. And it's also 
low enough so that you can see over it fairly easy. So that's just good, solid design right there. So what else do we have? Let's play with our crew, shall we? Okay. Oops, there we are. We were on. I didn't realize it set. One thing I did have to turn off on this thing. Oops, wait a minute. What happened? Where are you? There you are. What do I got to do to get you to set, dude? Oh. There we go. It was smarter than I was. Is there any... Are you in any way surprised by that? Uh, but it was... Uh, it did have a... Uh, kind of a road mitigation thing if you were leaving your lane or leaving off to the right towards the brush uh, it would take over the steering and I don't like that ever uh, I don't think that's a a lot of people like consumer reports and stuff they love that all every say it seems like every type safety feature they come out with they love but I'm telling you in my opinion none of this stuff is bait especially uh, Things like Super Cruise and Blue Cruise and everything, they're not, they're not ready for prime time. And look at how successful it's been for Tesla. How many zillions of dollars are they going to lose because of lawsuits against their self-driving system? They're not there yet, folks. They don't have, it, it's, the problem is, in, in my opinion again, because that's all you're ever going to get on anything you watch on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, there's facts thrown in there from time to time. But uh, they don't test stuff as much as they used to. They do so much of their testing virtually in computer simulations and all that kind of thing. And, it's, and in so many instances, that covered most of what they needed to test, but they always missed something important. And there's so much going on in a driving environment in the real world that the computer cannot take everything into account by any stretch. And I think it would be fine if, I, I feel like no car should have self-steering as part of cruise control right now until they get it right, until it's perfect. And uh, what is it that a lot of people say, well, yes, but perfect is the enemy of the good or something like whatever that expression is. Well, when it comes to safety in cars, you really need to have stuff dialed in perfectly. It's very, very important. Well, look at this cute little mufflerette right here. Uh, what the heck is that for? Well, you know, you don't have to tell me what it's for when you're a Honda Pilot Trail Sport. Look at the ruggedness of our Trail Sport. This, this is right. This is just your regular old Honda. Oh, wow, I love when I get underneath here and I can see that somebody's been driving. Look at how dirty that differential is. Somebody went through the... Uh, I think this thing is traveled. This doesn't look like the kind of dirt we get around here. This is different. It's not northeast dirt. This is like out uh, Phoenix Way type of stuff. But here is our rear suspension. And as you can see, we do have the unibody construction. So we have the sizable, sizable subframe with all its sizable subframe things. And we have a multi-link setup, of course, which is what everybody's using now. And now here's our lower control arm, which is stamped steel stuff, but it looks pretty stout. Then you have a front link right there. Where's my, where's my instrument? Here it is. Uh, I, I have my instrument with me today. Uh, there we are, here's our front link right here. Pretty stout, pretty stout setup. Then this is, of course, our lower link. Then we have this upper link right up yonder here. Uh huh. Here's our coily springy. But where is our shock absorber? Oh, that's right. This doesn't have shock. Oh, of course it has shock absorbers. As you can see, there's also a, a, an A-arm up here. There's all kinds of links. Everywhere you, you look, you see a different link. But I still haven't found the shock. There it is. Nestled, nestled inside here is our shock absorber right in front of the drive shaft there. And there's your drive shaft. And there is your front, uh, front mounted shock absorber. So very, very interesting setup because it has a whole lot of small pieces to it, but it looks like it's built to take a fair amount of punishment. It's also built to keep uh, premium alignment of the rear wheel with all these links on it to make it, uh, should you get a bit rambunctious in your uh, driving, especially off-road, it's going to keep those wheels 
it's facing the right direction, <laughs> which is always good. Uh, well, you know what else is always good while I'm right here? Look at this massive, look at this. this. I'm telling you, this is not the dirt we have around here. This is foreign dirt. Uh, a massive full-size spare tire that is identical to the tires around the rest of the vehicle, which is nice. So you're continental all the way, which is great. Uh, this is a good angle, by the way. You can see where our uh, drive shaft is, because there she is. It is a pretty stout-looking drive shaft, too, running all the way up into your transfer case. And here's our front suspension, which uh, also looks fairly uh, reinforced. And you got what also looks to be a pretty stout unibody construction up there. I don't see a whole lot of cladding and protection. You do have this protection right here for your fuel tank. That's very important. And uh, interesting, here is an anti-sway bar. It's not all that thick, but it's all the way mounted up here. And I'm assuming that's what, yeah, 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 yeah. there it is. It, it bounced right into the, uh, to that leading link right there. So this is a very complex uh, rear suspension on this vehicle. And uh, it rides really well and handles really well. So mission accomplished. The only question is, uh, if you do get it, it knocks something out of alignment when you're driving over boulders and such. With your trailer sport, uh, will it be a, a pain to get the uh, alignment adjusted because of all the various links? Ah, who knows? But it's also possible it's, it's not going to be that uh, likely to get out of alignment because of the way everything is designed. Every, every link is taking its own load in a certain direction. So, in theory, it might be an extremely reliable setup. Now, here's a little electric bit right here that attaches right into your differential. Probably involved with some of the... Uh, um, exactly how this system works, I am not entirely cogent upon it. I mean, it, 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 is, it is a special type of system for the trail sport, if I recall. It's a, it's a unique type of all-wheel drive system. Uh, and there are sensors and monitors everywhere that are helping to send information to the CPU about what's going on with any kind of tire slippage, front to back, left to right, all of that stuff. So it's all designed to make sure that you have at least one wheel that is delivering some traction. And the more you look under here, you can really see you're looking, it does look more like a truck. I bet this is very similar to the Ridgeline underneath. May not be, I could be wrong about that, but I'm, ass I'm assuming that a lot of the same strategies are used because uh, Ridgelines are also built to go off road a bit and take some punishment and haul some weight. And this thing, being a true three passenger unit, uh, is going to be hauling some weight too. Now, as you can see over here, what in the world are we out here? Well, that's that, another part of that uh, link. Now, excuse me, that uh, sway bar is there. Attaches via a link here. There is your shock absorber right there. So uh, this is just a, uh, it's a real potpourri of stuff that they got going on back here. And this subframe in particular right along here you, that runs longitudinally, or excuse me, transversely across the chassis and affixes both sides of the chassis to the under, uh, to the uh, unibody uh, is, everything looks very, very well reinforced. So uh, within reason, I think you could, you could do a, f a fair amount of off-roading with this vehicle with confidence. Uh, you could also, I forget, what did I tell you guys the towing capacity was? 5,000? Something like that. Uh, I think you could tow that amount with confidence because everything seems to be built to deal with all that stuff. This is not a Civic after all. This is a pilot for your off-road entertainment because it's a trail sport you know there is one thing about the trail sport that i i wish they'd do different and that is the fact that you ain't got no bumper sticking out back here you can't you can't put when you're posing you know uh like like so uh well anyway i told dewey that you know you can't do that here because there's no bumper now you do have the hitch receiver so you can put your foot there but i mean that ain't no it ain't the same I think they should extend this out a little bit so we actually have a rear bumper because it is, it is a sport utility and therefore we require that kind of sporty utility-ness 
in a rear bumper that's got a step of some sort in it. Just a suggestion. I don't make very many of those, uh, but for this vehicle, that's what they need to do. I'll tell you what, our 2023 Pilot all-wheel drive trail sport has a suggested uh, MSRP of $48,350, and that's pretty much, uh, it's, it's quite equipped. It doesn't have the navigation, though, which I complained about because I want navigation. But uh, you get an awful lot in this package for a grand total of $48,745, and it gets 18 miles per gallon city and 23 highway. So all in all, uh, this is a real impressive variation to the Pilot, which is already a very impressive vehicle indeed, Dad. Especially if you have a bunch of critters that you got to haul around with you and your stuff, and you want to go a little bit of off-road area <laughs> to find yourself a good campsite or something like that. Plus, get through the weather. Uh, if you have snow to deal with, that's a great thing. Uh, to enjoy it as far as winter sports are concerned and here's a vehicle that can take you there. Take care, be careful out there. See you soon.